It's straightforward sports with my man, Corey Jackson. What's up, Corey? Nothing much, man. What's going on? Oh, it's going down. You doing your thing. They talking about you out there. Yeah. This is straightforward sports. We are the best hot up and coming sports show in the Dallas DFW Metroplex. You already know today I'm joined with my two partners, Ian, Chikayla. What's going on, man? What's up, man? What's up? Man, we got the mock draft. Cam Newton just resigned with the Patriots. It's finna get real spicy in the NFL. That boy Dak finally got paid. You love to see a black man get paid. But first off, we got to start off with that mock draft. Ian, go ahead and give me them top 10 picks. All right, first up, we got the Jaguars with the number one pick. It's easy. It's, it's not really discussable. Trevor Lawrence. He's been the best prospect since he's since his freshman year at Clemson. He won the Natty beat uh, Alabama, you know. I don't think it's really much to discuss about. Some people might argue that, you know, Justin Fields is better or Zach Wilson is better, but it, it doesn't matter. Trevor Lawrence is going number one. That That's undisputed. Came his prospect right there. Right. I'm telling you. Then number two, you got the Jets on the clock. I got them taking Zach Wilson. I don't think Sam Donald is bad. I just feel like they're ready to start over. I feel like he hasn't produced enough. Uh, he hadn't just, he, ain't, he hadn't really did nothing. It's his time as a Jet. So they want to start over, you know, fresh start. Zach Wilson at a Bayou, you know, with, had 33 touchdowns, you know, on, only on three picks, led Bayou to 11 and one, decent. So do Good you on. do you see his game translating to the NFL? Because against against Coastal Carolina, he was kind of struggling out there. I mean, well, everybody had their ups and downs games. I feel like he could be all right, but at the same time, it's the Jets. I'm I'm not saying that. I'm, I don't even think he's better than Sam Donald. I think it's the Jets, but. Yeah. The Jets are going to be the Jets. We just got to see how that goes. Okay. Then number three, we got the Dolphins. I got the Dolphins taking Jamar Chase. Yeah. Devontae Parker, you know, he finally showed that, you know, well, the 2019, 2020 season is when I really seen Devontae Parker just, you know, blossom to what he's actually supposed to be, what he's been supposed to be. And then this season was kind of, I guess you could say, a compliment to that. So I feel like they just need another receiver to pair up with, uh, Devontae Parker, and also having Preston Smith, uh, you know, Preston Williams, you know, who's been playing pretty nice. And Jamal Chase, that receiver, best receiver in the draft. I think I think we're talking about the wrong Devontae here. Shouldn't we be talking about the nah, Heisman man. Trophy winner, Devontae nah, Smith? No. I feel like you're forgetting that Jamal <laughs> Chase just had 1,700 yards, almost 1,800 with 20 touchdowns just uh, just a year ago. That's with Justin two. Jefferson, who did yeah. dang near the same thing, you know, 1,500 and, you know, well, he had, I want to say he had about 18 touchdowns. So it's like, you can be, think about it if they didn't have Justin Jefferson. Because that's what happened with Devontae Smith this year. Jalen Waddle was hurt, so he was really the only option at the receiver position. And I'm not going to say that was force feeding him, because I guess you could say he was getting open. But yeah, yeah it made him look a little better than he was. That LSU squad was just something different. It was crazy. Well balanced right there. Then number four, the Falcons. I got the Falcons taking Justin Fields. Uh, I, I think, I think the Falcons said they wanted to stick forward with Matt Ryan going into uh, the twenty twenty one season, but I don't believe that. I, I just I don't believe that Matt Ryan he he got to his peak and that was that Super Bowl that he blew, and <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it's over for him. Yeah, his time is up. Yeah, he really doing my man Julio wrong. I feel like you know he wasting talent over there. It's too much talent over there to keep Matt Ryan over there. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, nah. They got to get rid of him. You Justin know, Fields is nice. You Second know where the Falcons were at yesterday? They were out there in North Dakota scouting that man, Trey Lance. Trey Lance is nice. But I don't think they're going to take Trey Lance. Justin Fields is obviously better than Trey Lance. So, Playing more competition. Yeah. To me, he has a better arm. And Trey Lance, he can use his feet a little better, but, you know. Do you see the Falcons just taking a quarterback this year to develop him for a year, hang on for Matt Ryan for a season, and then throw him in the spotlight? The way the NFL has been moving lately, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that he's probably going to get in around week three, week four. Matt Ryan going to have a couple yeah. bad games. That's how it's been with the last yeah. few quarterbacks. <coughs> Baker Mayfield, Justin Herbert. Yeah. It's been like that. Yeah, much. I can't agree with you on that. I do see that happening. Week three, week four, they throw him in there, let him get some uh, in-game snaps. I say he do pretty good, too. I, that's what I can see. I'm not sure. It depends on who they take. Number five, the Bengals. It's it's pretty. Uh, I don't, I'm not even too sure how to say his name, so, you know, don't bash me for it. But I want to say Penny Sewell. I don't, I don't know. But big guy from Oregon. Left tackle. 
Yeah. Panay so he's he raw right now, but yeah. he got a lot of potential. So right. I feel like I feel like taking tackles, you really can't take raw time. I think you should go with Rayshon. Rayshon Slater. Yeah. I think he's a better pick. Either oh, way it go, man, they got to take a tackle. <laughs> they have to because yeah. you got to get somebody that's going to protect Joe Burrow. Yeah. That's your future right there. You already seen he went down first season in Nasty the injury. NFL. You don't want to let that keep happening consistently because them hits is going to pile up. That's true. Yeah. No um, six, we got the Eagles. I got the Eagles taking Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is better than Devontae Smith to me. He got more body on him. He faster than him. I just, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with uh, Devontae Smith. And we know the Eagles' uh, receiver core is depleted, terrible. They had got a Jalen Rieger last year, which was a terrible pick, but it is what it is. And I think they can make up for it this year with taking Jalen Waddle. Anything on that? I got a big problem with that pick. You leaving the most versatile weapon? You think the Eagles gonna take the most versatile? They're not gonna take the most versatile weapon on the board, Cal Pitts. If, oh, go ahead. If we being honest, look, I thought you was gonna say Devontae Smith, but I think anything is open for Philly. I think just based off of what we done seen from Philly these last couple years, anything is nothing will surprise me out of them. Yeah, nothing at all. That's true. They just gotta stop trying to reach and just. Go for what's the best time on the board, like the Ravens always do. Number seven. Number seven. I got the lines. Then I got the – now I got Devontae Smith going. Because I, I know they just lost Marvin Jones Jr. and Kenny Galladay. So, you know, they're empty in the receiver position. And uh, he's the best receiver on the board at this time, you know. So, they got to get him. And I like it, you know. As a Packer fan, I love it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He gonna be giving y'all problems in the next no, five years. I don't years. think so. <laughs> I don't think so at all. He gonna be giving Jair y'all problems. Alexander gonna be there for the next five years, and I, no, Jair ain't gonna always be at the top. I hear you. I hear you. Rolling in number eight, man. Trey Lance with the Panthers. This is now this Trey now the Panthers selecting a uh, Trey Lance. This is barring that the the Sean Watson trade doesn't happen. Yeah, because I I mean it it seemed like it's gonna happen though. Cause I know uh, they didn't clear it up some cap. Yeah. I know uh, you know C Mac had uh, restructured his contract and all of that and whatnot. It seemed like they're trying to get uh, Deshaun Watson. It seemed like they're trying hard too. It See, seemed like they're the front runners also. Christian would be at the door if they bought Deshaun in, right? No, they're gonna I don't take think it. So. They're gonna give up a haul for that man. I don't think they got. And give it's up well Christian worth it. Though. The only thing that I will say about that though. <laughs> All the people that keep up with the Panthers, yeah. Matt Rule did just say that Teddy Bridgewater is their quarterback rolling forward. Look here. We know based off of NFL history, whenever somebody says that somebody's job is still intact or they're still the quarterback, you're gone. He is out the door. The Panthers are moving on, and they're foolish for even believing that he was a franchise quarterback last season, paying him all that money. I definitely agree with that. Nothing wrong with that take at all. Number nine, Broncos. This is pretty easy. Uh, no secondary at all. They just cut uh, AJ Boyer this season. I got him taking Caleb Farley with the ninth pick, best cornerback in the draft. Mm. I, I think as you know, this is it's a pretty easy pick, pretty simple pick. You think he's the best cornerback and he done sat out a whole season? I think Jamar Chase is the best receiver. He sat out a whole season. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. <laughs> I can't agree with that one. <laughs> I'm not taking him over an Alabama product. Patrick Surgeon. No, yeah, that's man. a hot Patrick take right there. Over yeah. Patrick Surgeon. Yes, that, that's, over Patrick that's a hot Sarton. take right there. I mean, he, he's strong. a better he's a better cornerback than Patrick Surgeon. Nah. I mean, Bama breeds. It, you yeah, I I feel like people give any type of any Bama product just an extra just an extra I guess hype behind them just because they went to Bama. Yeah, they're like an extra yeah. step ahead. A lot <laughs> no, of that, product, but that ain't always how it is though. That's that's not always how the plays out in the NFL, but then number ten, I got the Cowboys selecting uh, Patrick Certain because we seen the DBs this season and that wasn't nice. I feel like they should move Trayvon Diggs to the slot. Uh, no, I need. I think they need to move him to safety because the way he plays, he's an incredible ball hawk. Yeah, but his cover skills are terrible. He made some great plays. Yeah, and rolling in on Cam Newton. 
Cam Newton just <laughs> recently re up with the Patriots. A one year, $14 million deal. It's a ba- uh, it's base incentive, meaning if he throws for a certain amount of passing yards, he will get a bonus. If he wins so many games, he will get a bonus. If he makes it to the third round of the playoffs, he will get a bonus. Only eight mil of that is supposed to be guaranteed. And on top of that, I believe the Patriots are still sitting on about roughly $59 million in cap hit. I mean, in cap, free cap to go after the free agents that they are looking to pursue this upcoming off season. Now, here I ask the two of you, what does this mean for the Patriots rolling forward? Reopen Cam Newton. What do you see playing out for the Patriots in the near future? I'm going to let you go ahead and take that one, Ian. When I seen it, I just, you know, I was wondering, like, who is uh, Bill trying to tank for? <laughs> I couldn't really, th- I can't think of anybody that Bill just, you know, needs to tank for. Spencer Rattler's not a need. It's not, it's not too many needs that's coming up in the draft right now. So I, I was a little puzzled, you know. I don't, I don't know who he's, you know, really just want to get that bad. So, because I, I didn't think that was smart. Cam Newton is done. His arms out of there. He's losing his run, his run talent. That's what. I, that's really all he had for the past couple of years. Come on, yeah, man. And, and no, I'm. I'm a, I can only assume that he's just trying to tank. I feel like the Pagers, They can be in a good position with a couple of more moves this offseason. They can be back contenders. Not with Cam Newton at quarterback. You're disrespectful. It's just that simple. You, you done? I ain't done yet. Cam Newton's a quarterback, but who's that offensive coordinator? I understand that. That's one of the best offensive coordinators in the game. Josh I understand McDaniels. that. He can build a whole offense around Cam. Give Cam a whole offseason to learn that offense. Imagine what that man can do with it. But he can't make Cam throw better. That's that's not no. Cam he can't can bring Cam he can can't bring tw- 2015 Cam back. So nah, uh, Cam will never return to 2015 Cam. Just give Cam a couple of weapons. Draft a second, draft a receiver in the second round. Use your first round pick on a, maybe a, maybe a piece of an O line. I'm not really sure, but you can make something happen. Trade away Stephon Gilmore, probably. Look make JC Jackson the number one. You can make some moves. I'll give everybody the layout right now. We back. I said this last year for the loyal fans out there. We still go roll without Tom. We we we. You can say we need Tom. I don't think we do. We can still win without Tom. We're going to be back 10 and 6, 11 and 5. Cam Newton, look, we're not getting back 2015 Cam Newton. And I think it's disrespectful that you're coming in my man's like that. You're okay. real disrespectful. I don't like that. Okay. So, considering the fact, like I said, we're looking at 59 mil in cap. We got all of our picks, 15th. Can't remember what it is in the second round, but equivalent to whatever the 15th is in the second round, right in the middle. Bill is getting this man some weapons. He just he he just brought in Trent Brown, who's an All Pro with the Patriots the year that we won the Super Bowl, and restructured his contract. We still looking at one of the best offensive lines in the league with Isaiah Wynn. Depending on if we bring in David, we'll bring back David Andrews. Joe Thune is out the door. Shaq He's Mason's gone. coming back. We got people rolling in the door. Really, the defense still gonna be potent. Like you said, trading away Stephon Gilmore wouldn't be the worst uh, idea. At this point, if we ain't getting nothing significant out of it, we might as well keep the former DPOI. We're back. The Patriots, we still on top, whether people want to accept that or not. Y'all want us to be gone, we not gone. We we gave people a run for their money every single, well, not every week, but look, we went down a wire with the Seahawks, went down to the last play this season. The Bills. The Bills. Only lost the first game off of a fumble. He don't fumble, we win that game. We talking about the Chiefs. Held the Chiefs to what I want to say roughly ten points in the first half. I can't remember what the exact score was, but we had the Chiefs locked up in a box with the backup quarterback. With the backup quarterback, they don't do so. I want everybody to keep that in mind when we talk about these Patriots. And not to mention, they had the most opt outs, opt outs out of everyone in the NFL. Right or wrong? Right. And we getting back that man Dante Hightower and Patrick Chung. And you still got that boy uh, Kyle Duggar still playing in the box. Adrian Phillips playing in the box. We got plenty of we got plenty of studs everywhere. We ain't got the top tier, but look here, yeah. we still in the mix. But can I say the biggest downfall on the Patriots? 
you guys GM Bill Belichick. He's he's not a great GM at all offensively. He can breed offensive linemen. He can scheme up great defensive plays for the defense who aren't star studded all the time. But he don't. I don't feel like he understands that he has to get star receivers or star run, running backs or anything. It's like he always just trying to steal them. I mean, because I, believe, I gotta, think Tom Brady was bringing some of those guys like Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. I don't really think. I don't think Bill Belichick's a good GM like that. Well, you got to think about it. Like, I guess since he feel like he ain't never really – well, since he ain't really never needed, you know, yeah. star receivers and star running backs like that, I don't think he's going to change it now. And do you see – do y'all see people wanting to come to New England now that they're not, you know, the front runner for, you know, Super Bowl or anything like that? I just yes. can't – I can't see it. Yes. I feel like people was going to New England, you know, back then, you know, because, you know, they were obviously the favorites to win Super Bowl. It's because of Tom Brady. Obviously. But we have Cam Newton. We got Cam Newton. And people, and people respect Cam Newton across the league, and people like Cam Newton across the league as far as receivers. And Odell Beckham has even said that plenty of times, and we have even heard plenty of rumors. Yeah, every rumor is the truth, but we have seen and heard every rumor about Odell wanting to link up with Cam Newton. And we've heard every rumor about the Patriots wanting to bring Odell to New England. Yeah. It's it's not just simply about who wants to play in New England. It's about who wants to play with Cam Newton and those other studs that we have in New England. And look, whether it's a Kenny Galladay, Emmanuel Sanders, Corey Davis, Hunter Henry, John New Smith, we getting somebody this offseason. I doubt it. We're I getting somebody. It. I can see you Kyle Rudolph. And see, that's what people don't understand. The Patriots don't need the best players yeah. to win games. The Patriots haven't had just the best players all this little dynasty that they had. And then on top of that, this past season, it was practice squad players coming in and out. And I tell you that every time. And we were still going toe-to-toe, beating the Cardinals. You know Jacoby saying? Myers, the number Jacoby one receiver. Jacoby Myers doing it. Marcus Peters, former Pro Bowl cornerback. Look, we we got the talent and we got the coaches. We going we look, 10 and 6, 11 and 5. I'm calling it right now. I was off last year. I'm calling it right now this year. Six and ten. <laughs> and that's sticking. Disrespect. That, that's six. sticking right there. Six Dis- and ten. Disrespectful. The division is too good. And y'all not getting any better. So it's no. Y'all getting left behind. He's gonna eat them words. Watch it. I okay. believe so. Now, is Dak Dak Prescott resigned? No. They he they they finally done re upped him. Is he capable of leading no. the Dallas Cowboys back to the promised land? No. Yes. No. How, okay. Now, how can you, how could you really sit there and say that? Uh, so, do you even feel like he was worth all the money he uh, he uh, got? Yes. Solely based on solely based on that Dak wasn't going that, saying that he's a forty million dollar quarterback right now. He's not saying that he's that he's as good as Patrick Mahomes. He was saying that the cap's gonna go up and players yeah. are gonna get paid more. Yeah. So he's saying that he wants to be in like. The conversation is one as of the highest paid like, quarterbacks. You know, still. as he's he feel like he should get paid as a elite quarterback over the years. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No. You know why he shouldn't get paid as an elite quarterback over the years? Because he's not an elite quarterback. Getting paid as an elite quarterback is for elite quarterbacks, and that is what he's not. Think about it. You looked at that offense without. How did the offense look without with, without Dak after when he went down? Bad. Terrible. Terrible. But I mean, at the same time, they had no type of O line. That no type you of line. That. All, all that offense really had was a. Uh, well, okay, this well the O line went down, so Zeke production went down, and all all that offense really had was the three star receivers that you can't do nothing with because you got a backup quarterback Andy Dalton and yeah three star receivers yeah you with, got a pro uh, bowl with running a backup back. quarterback the whole season Come I see now. weapons everywhere I see no excuse as to why they shouldn't have been able to get it done I personally think it's on. The coaching staff. Yeah, you got all McCarthy this talent. has to go. You got all this talent. There ain't no excuse as to why you can't win a game, why you can't win eight games, nine games. You shouldn't have been in the place that you was in the entire season. Back on quarterback or not, Andy Dalton has led a team to the playoffs before and was once a franchise quarterback. Was once a franchise quarterback. He ain't that, that far off. I didn't see ago, much man. of a difference between him this year and what he was doing in Cincinnati. I, how come you didn't see a difference? Because it, he looked just the same. And he had really, more talent all, around him, man. if anything. He had more talent Yeah, he had more him. talent around him. That's it. He, he did not look the same. That That is not the same Andy Dalton. 
But look, I'm in the middle between y'all two right now because you said no. I agree with you. Dak isn't capable of leading the Dallas Cowboys to a Super Bowl. But it's not because he's not an elite quarterback. Dak is a elite quarterback. Dak's numbers has progressed in yeah. every statistic, every every year of his career. Started out 3,600 passing yards, rookie season. Okay, it dropped off a little bit, 300. Other than that, 3,800 next year in year three. 49, that well, 4,900 last year before he got injured. And he was on pace to throw for 5,000 this year. Passing yeah. touchdowns, going up. Picks, yeah, iffy up and down his entire career. But his production has seemingly increased as his career has progressed. Zeke's production is slowly declining, declining because Dak is coming into the limelight. I don't think it's because of Dak. I think it's because Zeke. Like, going to the game every game saying, we're going to establish the run with Zeke Elliott. We're going to feed Zeke. And he doesn't produce. Two yards a carry, one yard a carry, that's terrible. I don't. I think you got to get rid of him before the time for people realize yeah. that he's washed up. Yeah. And also, um, if you do the history of the NFL, running back's life is about five years. And, mm -hmm. they don't and last you long. start to slip because you take a lot of hits. Especially you know? those grand and pound guys like that. Yeah. Uh, I remember um, we had one uh, that used to run for the Giants. You don't remember uh, the big dude that played for the Giants by Brandon five? Brandon Jacobs. Right. And they started calling him the tiptoe mm -hmm. because he couldn't even hit a hole no more after a while. So, yeah, you know, five years. Uh, but what you were saying about Dak, I've been impressed with him since he has the first opportunity to play. He's a very intelligent quarterback as well as being good. That's one thing that Tony Romo had. Tony Romo had a lot of intelligence on a football Feel. I believe that Dak is more physically gifted than Tony, but Tony had a lot of smarts on the field, and I think that that's what Dak brings to the table. He's a very intelligent quarterback to be so young. Without a doubt. And then speaking on it again, like I said, I agree with you, but then I agree with you also. I'm in the middle. Only reason I say Dallas, well, Dak can't deliver them a Super Bowl is simply because it's Dallas. <laughs> Dallas is gonna find a way to man, <laughs> Dallas is gonna find a way to mess up any opportunity that they have every year. Yeah. We see it every year. Top five roster for the past three to four years, these past seasons in the NFL. Still, what do they do? Make it to the playoffs, get knocked out in the first round. Eight and eight record, four and twelve record. It's not Dak. Dak can't save Dallas from Dallas. It's just that simple. Yeah. They had about like three playoff wins since their last Super Bowl appearance, probably, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Time. Over the, what, stretch of 25 years? I got an unpopular opinion for you guys. I think it's time to stop calling these guys America's team. <laughs> no, well, look, I ain't even a Cowboys fan, but I think everybody knows they're America's favorite team. Because as much as, like, you know, they trash or whatnot, they can, well, well, you'll see more Cowboy fans anywhere than, you know. America loves to win, <laughs> not the Cowboys. I think the newer age, as we get older, in time, yeah. they'll probably fall back because it ain't too many people, millennials, that are rocking with the Cowboys. Since I've been watching football, I've not liked the Cowboys ever since I've known what football was. <laughs> walking in every Thanksgiving, walking in every whatever you want to call it, playoff game, week three matchup against the Saints, this and that. I've always seen my cousin screaming at the TV, my uncle screaming at the TV, and why? Because the Dallas Cowboys are losing. So and, and and another thing to keep in mind that they was America's team before they was a Jerry Jones. Yeah, yeah. You know they were America's team when Roger Starbuck was exactly. The and and the difference is they did win. You know when they were that America's team. So it's been a long time now since the Cowboys have won, and eventually uh, Jerry's going to have to step to the side and bring some real management in that can run the organization and just be the owner. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to keep on overpaying. And that's the problem with them now because you got a lot of defensive guys on that line that he paid a lot of good money to. And they really did not produce like you would expect for the type of money that they were making. But now you got them wrapped up in so many contracts. You gave uh, Dak a big contract. You gave Ezekiel a, a big contract. You got like three, four guys on your team that's making over $100 million. So eventually you can't rebuild when you got that much money out like that. Yeah. 
I think they just got to re- go back and rework those contracts with Amari, Zeke, Demarcus Lawrence, Jalen Smith. Yeah. And trade Leighton Vander Esch before it's too late. Well, you can still get something good out of him, too. Let, let me ask y'all a question. Uh, when you come down to looking at your running back, that back up has been playing better than the starter. Yeah, Tony Pollard's been producing. At a fraction of the course. What do you do? You have to ask yourself who's willing to take on that, though. You have to ask yourself who who's the buyers in the situation, who's willing to take on Ezekiel Elliott's contract, right. knowing that his production is slowly declining right. as the years keep going. He but goes to the right play, place. That he, can, he can go back to regular Zeke for him, though. Well, do yeah. you play him just because you overpaying him, or do you put the best person in there that can help you win? Because at the end of the day, you know, it's just like the Brooklyn Nets. It's championship or bust now. You put together a roster that you cannot go to the playoffs and get knocked out in the first round. You got to be playing the champions that's coming from the other side now. So the Cowboys almost have that type of talent that it's Super Bowl or bust. They should have been at the Super Bowl the last three, four years with that roster they had. Absolutely. You ask me, I bet you I could get them to the Super Bowl. And I want y'all to tag Jerry Jones, tag whoever you got to. Get me the job, please. I'll get them boys back to the promised land. Mm-hmm. Look, if you speaking on the Tony, Tony Pollard situation, I think you get you a little New Orleans, little running back, I mean, backfield going like how they had with Mark Ingram and yeah. Alvin Kamara. Yeah. It's not necessarily benching one and playing the other. Why not use both of them? Yeah, Why not use everything to your, uh, to your, to your, you know what I'm saying? Use everything that you got because... Like I got a I got a friend and I'll never forget what he said. They can't guard all of us. You play the Dallas Cowboys, you can't guard every last one of them. Mm-hmm. You just can't. It's too much talent across the board. But right. the coaching doesn't allow for the Dallas Cowboys to succeed. And the management doesn't allow for them to yeah, succeed. Yeah, they gotta they gotta have those uh what do you call the blocking uh running backs that never do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they gotta have that when you're right. You could put those two explosive um, running backs together in a lineup and, and it's almost like an unstoppable situation. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Hmm. Best rushing duo in the NFL. Yeah. Yep. Using what you have. You care to speak on that? I mean, well, I don't think, uh, I think it's a little more com- complex than that because I don't think Zeke done. I don't think Zeke done and I don't think Tony Powell is that good. I just think, you know, nobody got no type of film on them. You know how it always be with, you know. Yeah. Running backs that you ain't seen too much of. They always show flashes every once in a while. But shouldn't you give him more of a chance so you can see if he's actually that guy? I think they ha- I think this year they kind of have been giving him a little more of a chance. He's a nice, you know, third down running back. Well, well, I can say this. With that receiving core that the Cowboys have, there's no way that Zeke should be running for two yards. You cannot be able to pack that line when you got those type of explosive uh, receivers out there. And that's what troubles me. You know, I've seen teams that don't have a receiving call and they just pack the line and stop the run. You know, that's pretty much what happened with uh, uh, Saquon Barkley Mm -hmm. because those receivers really wasn't producing and he had to do too much trying to get his yards. Ezekiel, it just seems like it's something ain't there no more. I I don't know what it is. It could even be the hunger. You know, sometimes you hungry as long as the money is there to get. And when you get it, can you stay hungry? That's and the- that's the same thing. You can win a championship and disappear. That's why Michael Jordan and, and LeBron and them, they go other places and they find ways to win championships because they have to stay motivated in order to be that type of player. And is he motivated? Because I don't see that same... You know, fire. This guy used to, you know, I mean, like, if you hit him trying to tackle him, he would actually hurt you just trying to touch him. Mm -hmm. Now I see one guy basically bringing him down, you know, with a single tackle. So you have to wonder, is it something wrong? Is his desire not there? Now, one thing I do know is every year the linebackers are getting faster. So you can't go around them like you used to go around them. You got to go through them. But still, if you're running with strength, you should at least average three yards uh, a, a carry, at the least. It should be very few times 
I didn't see midgets tackle this dude on, <laughs> on the line. You know, yeah. this dude was, was small as hell and brought him down. So that's what you have to start being concerned. Is he playing hurt? Yeah. Like I said, Dallas is going to be Dallas. Dallas is going to find a way to lose every time. Dallas can only stop themselves from themselves at this point. That's what we have to just accept and live with. Hey, I can go to sleep at night because I ain't the Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> Is that so you New England coordinator come back? Yeah. You said what? That defensive coordinator come back? No, nah, they got rid of him. I'm not sure who oh, the new D- defensive Dan Quinn. coordinator. Yeah, they hired Dan Quinn. That's right. But so. enough on Dallas. Well, uh-huh. enough on the Cowboys. Are the Dallas Mavericks contenders in the West? It'll be well. Yes, I'm gonna say yes because like think about it like this. Is it? It looked like they're catching fire now. They were 73 in their last uh, 10 games. And I want to say Luka didn't play two of them in the, that they lost. And if the playoffs ended today, I want to say they'll play the Jazz. Yeah, they had the Yeah, AC I got to right beat now. the Jazz. Uh, yes. I mean, I don't I don't know. It's just, I I can see it, man. That, that man is a legend. That man is a young legend. Poor and Zingas. I feel like that, yeah. Paul Zingas is your problem. Of course. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't stay healthy. That's true. So you can't build chemistry with someone that played 20 games and then he's out 15, 20 more. That's if you can get Paul Zingas, you know, when he was in New York, I seen the potential, you know, even before the draft. Mm-hmm. A lot of people was like, oh no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. There's no seven foot two, seven foot three guy that can shoot like him. And that is you, you can't take that away. But when you long and very thin like him, Fresh that's a lot of leg injuries yeah. and stuff like that. So if this dude can stay healthy, the Mavericks got a, a very, very good chance. They may not get to the finals this year, but they could be that team to be. Now, if Pozingas and Luka continue getting hurt, they're going to have problems. You're going to have to really look at trading Pozingas if he's worth anything. Luka is going to be worth something for, for some time to come. But Pozingas is going to be the one you're going to have to trade because you're going to have to build uh, around Luka with the, the type of players that will benefit him. Luka will go great with, with Golden State with him when they were in their prime. This dude just does everything. You know, he's he's almost kind of got the that – I could pass you the ball. I can shoot. He would go great with um, a team like Golden State when when their whole team was there. They have to build up on the players now. You know, if they can get some consistent shooters around him and a couple of defenders, Mavericks can run the table because it, it, it's really – it looks more – It the teams look more better than they really are. I'm telling you, you're going to see when it gets to our playoff, some of those teams ain't going to look as good as they've been looking. Yeah, I say that's exactly what I, he took the words right out of my mouth. It's solely dependent on Porzingis. Like last year, they had a chance to go ahead and knock the Clippers out. I think they would have knocked him off, but he sat out with knee soreness before he was even diagnosed with a knee injury. <laughs> <laughs> that's a soft move to me. Yeah, and he just left Luke out there hanging. But yeah, but that's Luke. him. He he did it in New York. This yeah. dude demanded to be traded to be somebody's sidekick when New York was trying to make him the man. That's mm-hmm. smart, though. Everybody's, he probably didn't feel like he was uh, yeah. capable of being the man. Right. Everybody's, everybody know they can't be a bad man. So right. In some situations, like right now, AD, he's a, he's a Robin right now. Yeah. I mean, hey, in time, I say no, not right now. The Mavericks are not contenders right now. In time, without a doubt. If we're talking about the Mavericks right now, we're talking about a Dallas Mavericks team that cannot win games against premier NBA teams, against teams that can go toe-to-toe, that have star power. Philadelphia, L.A., both L.A. teams, Milwaukee, Utah, to your point, you said Utah, they can knock out Utah. I strongly disagree. Utah has been giving them problems since last year. Down the stretch, they cannot close big games. And like both of y'all said, Porzingis can't stay healthy. No, they're not doing it. Yeah, he's not staying healthy. He's getting paid top dollar max contract money. Right. And he's not even putting up the numbers. If we going off of numbers, I mean, look, Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid are getting paid in the same neighborhood as Porzingis. A couple thousands off. Porzingis is averaging 
20 and 8, shooting 35% from the three. Joel is averaging 30 and 11 and three. Jokic averaging 20, 27, 11 and nine. You, you, These are MVP numbers. You want to get even more specific? Julius Randle getting paid 19 million. Doing more than him. Right. On a consistent basis. And right. That's the problem with the Mavericks. They don't have no consistency. We're talking about the 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 the, the sidekicks and the uh the supporting cast that the Mavericks have. Tim yeah. Hardaway Jr., Josh Richardson, Maxi Kleber, it's no consistency. You can you get 30 out of uh Tim Hardaway Jr. one night, the next night he barely puts up six. Porzingis yeah. goes out there, puts up 11 and three one game, and then want to turn around and play like he's Shaq 27 and 15 or 14 or and something in that neighborhood. Like, there's no consistency. And the last point that I want to say, Rick Carlisle's not the answer. I live in Dallas. Y'all can come get me if you want to. He gave us a championship. I could care less. He's not the answer. He's still living in this fantasy that we're still the 2011 Mavericks. If you look at the roster, it's a lot of comparables. Jalen Brunson ain't nothing but another J.J. Brea. Tim Hardaway ain't nothing but a, a less talented J uh, Jason Terry. We haven't found a Tyson Chandler caliber player yet again. Luka's not Dirk, but Luka is Dirk to a sense because he is the best player on the team. And that's who we're building around. It's so just not there. Building, yeah. This isn't it. He can, he, Rick Carlisle can win us games, but he won't get us over that hump to where we're the premier team that we should be in the NBA's Western Conference. I agree. Yeah, those role players, they got to step up some more. Because if you look, Luka's leading them guys in every major statistical category. There's no way Luka should be leading in points, rebounds, assists, steals, all that. Come on now. You got to have some role players step up. Tim Hardaway's got to step up in some categories. And those other guys, they just got to just come along with us so we can get to the promised land. I feel you on that one. Nothing that makes sense. I got to agree. <laughs> they are too, a little too inconsistent. <laughs> I might got a little too ahead of myself right there. <laughs> so uh, we're going to close it out today. And we got a major announcement for our fans out there. We're coming with a, a $100 Visa gift card giveaway real soon. We will leave the instructions to the uh, to enter in the giveaway on our Instagram, at straightforward sports, under, I mean, underscore straightforward sports, no spaces, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And uh, that's it. This is straightforward sports. Well, yeah, man. All right. Yeah, next thing Cam gonna be good. Cam gonna be straight, bro. Cam terrible.